I see it's taken more than sleight of hand to lead you here, hero. <laughs> Classic misdirection. Are you surprised that the magician is revealing his hand to you? Well, now that you're my captive audience, I have the intimacy, the absolute privilege to tell you what lies beyond the smoke and mirrors that you oh so seem to be entertained by. Welcome to a hobby of mine. You may see me as a purebred villain, born for the job of catastrophe and misdirection. Stealing your heart seems to be what needs to be done at this moment. Now you must be thinking, this is classic, a moment to steal you away. There must be some heinous purpose, something behind the motives that I am someone lost to the laurels of reason. And yet here I stand. I do not wish you harm. Believe it or not, I wish to offer you something. You while being a thorn in our side for very, very long, having made me drop some of my favorite tricks, grudges would be natural. But now, now I see you as something necessary, a fold to my actions. I'm sure you can't understand it, but let's get you out of that capsule. No funny moves now. I wouldn't want to have to put you back in. Deal? Yes. <laughs> so you can be agreeable. Here's some tea for you. Welcome to the land of the big. No more misdirections. Our sleight of hand is needed. But... That doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it in a casual sense as well. <laughs> you look as though you've seen a ghost. Sit, enjoy. I told you my reason isn't to harm you. Capturing you was a magnum opus of sorts. You see, the greatest magic trick that was ever done was the one that nobody knew was magic at all. Please, will you give me the honor of a single date? <laughs> you look as though you've seen a ghost even more so than before. A magician does not reveal his hand easy, but you, you have captivated me. I know we stand on different sides of the law, of hearts opposed to ever seeing eye to eye, but I can't see anything anymore. It's like looking with my eyes closed if I think of a future without you, with one of us capturing or ending the other, for be it for something to have happened to you. It would be unforgivable, even though I am loyal friend and associate of Tomura Shigaraki and the League of Villains. That doesn't make me heartless, and neither are we purebred villains in the sense of cruelty being a necessary means. It is means to an end. A revolution must happen. And I wish for you to be with me. Whether we stay as enemies or we become something more special remains firmly a trick all your own. You have 
So much power here. I wish I had more. I wish I had a magic trick to capture a fancy, but alas, all I can offer is this rose. A promise of peace, at least for now. You may see me in many, many different ways, but I hope you'll see me as a man captivated by your beauty and grace, your breathtaking nature, in such a way I couldn't look away. You were like the most special magic trick, even when you were trying to capture me, and always I would escape. This game of cat and mouse became so enamoring. Some days it would be the opposite. Other days it would firmly sit in the court of magic that could only exist in my heart. Thoughts, feelings, everything mixed together, and I... I wanted to formally ask you on a date. That was my charge behind the crime. So, I must apologize, my hero. I simply cannot escape from thoughts of you, and wanted to at least have one try at getting along. <laughs> if it seems surprisingly genuine, it's because it is. I have no ulterior motive, and you could simply walk out the door. Nobody knows of this. I made sure of it. I'm not acting under someone's rule, nor am I a slave to what I am. Villains have hearts too. We are not such mindless brutes as to not. Elegant as it may sound, I do not wish to keep you further than asking yes or no. Will you accept this rose in the state? I wish to show you what it means to live a day in my life. I've thought high and low of how... How could we bridge the distance between hero and villain? I've ached and wretched my brain to make the perfect trick. But alas, my magic was never enough. I realized quite quick, the heart is a fickle audience, and one you cannot fool with anything less than genuine. That is why I came to the conclusion that fooling was never my intention with you. To enamor you with my magic tricks, that would be more than enough for me. Not to trick, but to treat. To show that there might be something about me that makes you feel special. Ah, yes. Where are my manners? I will reveal my outfit. <laughs> Voila. I actually hand-sewn this outfit in my spare time. When I would think of you, it is my most elegant, my most beautiful outfit. I reserved it for your eyes and your eyes alone, in hopes that you might see me in a more positive light, and that I might be something more than just your enemy. Even that is something I... I've considered. I know enemies and lovers are far different things. I know that I shouldn't have feelings for you, but I fell in love with you at first sight. You did the most spectacular magic trick the moment I met eyes with you. I know my mask prevented you from knowing, but I could never forget that moment, and I wish to offer you something equally as unforgettable as 
impactful as you have been on me, as absolutely integral as you have consumed my creativity. You've given me so many things without even knowing it that I simply had to ask you out. So if you'll pardon my shamelessness and my admittedly nervous attempts to make you understand why you are here, there is more to it than my best outfit, isn't it? <laughs> Can I take that as you like it? <laughs> That's... That means a lot to me. I made it from recycled outfits that I could find between work. I'm not some rich man who could buy you the world, but I am a creative. A magic trick might be worth as much as the gold and jewels of a king, but it's all in the eyes of a beholder, and I wish to find out what these magic tricks mean to you. No one ever thinks of the dove after it comes out of the hat, don't you think? Well, this dove's name is Dovely. Would you like to meet Dovely? You can pet her. See, I actually named her Dovely because she had a bit of a run-in with a cat. And I had to save her from a very grisly, gruesome situation. But look at her now. Look at how lovely she's become. She rose against her pain and her suffering. And she reminded me of myself. I grew up in a situation much the same. And I won't say I'm not marred by it. I won't say that I've ever forgotten it. Unfortunately, hearts and minds can't simply whisk it away like a disappearing act. But you... You will never know how much... long ago I... I digress. I shouldn't be talking about this so soon. Are you certain? You would really wish to know. Very well. I... I suppose it's my fault for thinking of it. It's just... Something as simple as my pets and friends. They mean everything to me. But I... I thought it was enough, but... When I met you, I had to at least try. Something about you makes me feel alive in a way that makes the pain feel like it's no trouble at all. I am aware that it's a selfish reason, something I cannot apologize enough for. I wholeheartedly fell in love with you and I will not at least any time without trying in this state at least give up on that if after my attempts you find me unable to be worthy or simply don't find the prospect of giving me a chance acceptable. I will respect your wishes, and I will cherish today. As the moment I followed my heart without worrying of the consequences or the issues that could be caused, could I just ask one favor? No matter what happens, won't you remember today? Thank you. 
from one heart to another. I'm glad we met, even if I will offer a complete apology for capturing you in the, my quirk. You know, a long time ago, I used to be praised for it, just once. But it meant the world to me that I was. It gave me hope before things got bad. And I won't dwell on that because I'm more than I was. I'm no longer that scared child. The pain of which I found. I have formed it into something beautiful from fiery hatred, like a match, turned into flowers like that. <laughs> I've also taken it upon myself to give you um, a home-cooked meal, as it wouldn't be very easy for me to go out in public with you, as is. No offense. We would draw far too much problems to each other that I would never wish for you to face. I wish only for this to be enjoyable and carefree, and that is why. Forgive the lady and the tramp-inspired setup, but beggars cannot be choosers, and I, I've made everything in this room with my own two hands. I'd like to think the view of the city, despite lack of amenities, is quite good, and I'm quite confident in my cooking abilities, as you'll see. I have something up my sleeve. <laughs> Voila. Dinner is served. <laughs> this is with the freshest ingredients I could find. I won't lie to you. I've had to get them myself to find wild mushrooms and varying dandelions and such. It may be what some consider a beggar's meal, but I have practiced this meal my entire life. Whenever I was hungry, it would bring a smile to my face, and I hope, just once, it can bring a smile to yours. Please, enjoy. I've named it... What should I name it? Truth be told, I never did. Not out of embarrassment or shame but rather because I never knew what would suit it. Wouldn't you like to name it? <laughs> that would be delightful. If I had something to cherish you by, even after this date, even if what I wish for can't be true, I would like to dream about it. <sighs> Sorry. The one magic trick I could never do was to hide and wear my heart anywhere but my sleeve. Making it have a disappearing act is not something suited to a man like me. I am genuine, if nothing else, and I will not disrespect you or your intentions at all. Huh. You enjoyed the first bite. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Sorry. It just means the world to me to see you smile. To see that is everything I ever hoped it would be. And more. I'm sorry if I've gotten too in my heart about this. 
It just brings me joy. I don't normally have the ability to even dream about. So thank you, if nothing else, for humoring me. No matter where your heart lies. Thank you. You have made this man's dream come true. Even if we stand on different sides of a war, we can have this meal and have a moment. That means something. I suppose it just proves how much you've meant to me. A hope in a world where I've lost so much. And just like Dovely, I, I felt that you, you too, have scars, whether they be visible or not. And please don't misunderstand me. From the very moment you've been so cordial to me, so kind, I could think of you as nothing less than special. I apologize if my heart on my sleeve is too loud. But to think you would not only compliment my outfit, but my cooking as well. That you would sit down and break bread with your enemy. But so much more than just that. I don't want to be your enemy. Even though I know we'll always have different ideals, I wish for nothing more than to be with you through a difficult, arduous journey that has meaning not because of the pain, but because of the warm hand holding yours. You'll have to forgive me, I did some sleight of hand, and I found mine somehow entangled with yours in the most curious way. <laughs> I am glad you came. Thank you. Thank you. I will cherish this moment for the rest of my life. I will attempt my best to become someone worth holding this hand in the future. And if ever there is a time someone seeks to harm you, I will save you as best as I can, offering any more I cannot be sure, because my friends, my family, they are not of blood ties but of heart. And I know, without seeing eye to eye, it is almost impossible what I wish for. And yet, I don't want to give up when I look at you. And a beautiful day it is. It gives me hope for a future where we are defined not by hero or villain, but by heart, by the magic, the absolute magnum opus of my career would be to use magic to bring a smile to that beautiful face, to millions of Beautiful faces, all of which pale in comparison to the one right in front of me in this makeshift area 
that I kept locked away. Thank you. No matter what you think of me, thank you. <laughs> You're foolish, but... I'm glad you are. And I think I can relate on that. For as much forethought as the magician has to use, unmasking myself and... Revealing all my secrets to you, my face and my heart, and my hand. I regret none of it. A predictable magician isn't much of a magic man at all, and yet I much prefer this to the alternative, don't you? Enjoy my company as well. This is very important to me. And I will allow you the peace of the morning, the rising sun on the horizon, and the beauty that could only be matched by your smile. Hmm? Ah. So you'd like to stay for now? I... I would be happy. The happiest, actually. To just get to know you more. To understand you no longer as that first love caught firmly in my gaze. But as more than just hypotheticals and what ifs, would it be okay if we got to know each other? Would it be all right if I pulled a magic trick and stole your heart right now? It was half a joke, but only half. Don't tempt me. If you did, I wouldn't be able to stop you. Be still my beating heart, but how could I ever stop if I'm given the opportunity to be with the one I could never have, but the only one I've ever wanted. I will not squander this very special moment, my dear assistant. <laughs> Shall we make such a trick? To think it would be you who was kissing me. I thought you'd run away. See me as a monster. Not see me as even a human. But you kissed me. You went on this silly little date with me. You treated me wonderfully. And I can't help but feel so much. It is impossible for me to not, in light of everything. I... I wish to be more. Much more. Is that all right? Is that something that could be more than a dream? Is it selfish for me to want that? 
selfish of me to hold that dream in the highest regard. Could it really 